All right, so we're going to go over my uh, syllabus on the North Slope Science e-learning plan. Um, so this is for my fifth and seventh hour. This is going to cover uh, everything from uh, next uh, Tuesday through the end of the school year. So let's just go over this. I'll, I'll read it with you, and I'll try to uh, elaborate on some things that uh, may may not make any sense. Uh, this document is to provide clarification on my e-learning procedures and expectations. Students will need to gain access to the book through digital or other methods and stay on pace for six weeks worth of readings, questions, discussions, and assessments. These assignments will cover the remainder of the school year, uh, the education standards. So if anybody's interested in the uh, standards behind uh, the teaching that I'm doing here, uh, this is essentially what I'm focusing on. Um, the objectives uh, are that uh, all the students engaged will analyze the biological connections of terrestrial uh, species on the North Slope, um, terrestrial mammals specifically. The students will explain their role in an ever-changing environment, um, uh, and we will uh, go ahead and compare the ancestral modern survival methods for life on the North Slope and how they affect the overall ecosystem. That's our goal after the six weeks. Um, I really need to have everybody uh, get on their computer and at least from time to time get access to the internet. Uh, if you can get these documents uh, downloaded on your computer, you won't need internet continually, but it will certainly make it a, a lot go make it go a lot more smoothly for you and for me. Uh, if you um, don't have a computer, I have the option for uh, doing the Earth Science curriculum, or if you'd like to stick with the North Soap curriculum, I have an option uh, below. Um, but we still need to uh, try and keep communication uh, going with me every week, uh, whether that means uh, via email or if you are calling my uh, Google Voice number, that, uh, that also works. So uh, the points that you'll be getting uh, are as follows. Uh, number one, the four weekly self-assessments. Each one is worth 10, totaling in 40 points. You'll get uh, two digital projects, 20 points total. That's 10 points each. Uh, you'll have a unit exam on the terrestrial animals. That's 20 questions, 20 points. And then you'll have a unit exam on survival methods. Again, 20 questions, 20 points. Um, so let's go over uh, my procedures and expectations. You need to make sure you're checking into Google Classroom daily. Um, that, that means if I have a new video or if I'd like to change something, you would be aware of it uh, as soon as I posted it. There will be 100 points given out for the rest of the school year. There is no grade wait from here on out. So. Uh, whereas before a project was worth like 40% of your grade right now, the 20 points is just worth 20 points. It doesn't change based on the difficulty of the work. This was to simplify it, um, just to give you an ABCD format here, 90, 80, 70, 60, and 50 points is all I'm giving. If you get below 50 points, um, I just... I don't I don't know what to give you I this this is six weeks worth of work that if you just sat down and did it you could probably get done in one week if you really want to but uh, I've paced it out so uh, it should work for everybody's schedule and everybody's pace so um, each week make sure you get that assessment done it's 10 points each um, it's totally 40 points to exam so will be 20 points and for and make up the other 40 points of your grade so for example by May 15th, the last day of the school year, Andrew does four out of four self-assessments. Um, that's 40 points. He gets 13 out of 20 on his first exam and 19 out of 20 is his last exam. Uh, maybe he's feeling a little lazy uh, just or he's just getting busy. Uh, maybe something happened. He doesn't do either of his 10-point projects, so his grade for the nine weeks is 40 points for 40 questions plus 13 on the first exam, 19 on the second exam, and 0 and 0, which equals 72 points. Andrew gets a C for this nine weeks, which will count towards his semester grade. Remember, this is the fourth quarter, so we're going to calculate it in to the semester grade including what you got third quarter okay so um, uh, consider that when you are um, deciding what to do and what not to do so uh, each Friday questions from the self-assessment are due which means if they are not turned in on time there is a late penalty each week you wait to turn something in a 10% deduction will be taken off for example if you skip week one and choose week six to complete it you'll get a 50% 
uh, deducted from your final score. So a perfect 10 point assignment will only get five points. So please don't wait. I don't wanna see 20 students turning in their assignments on the last week of school. I don't have enough time to do that. So this is my way to avoid uh, having that happen. I will count you off, okay? Uh, the weekly schedule is tentative, uh, meaning that it can change and will evolve as time goes on. I may substitute a set of questions from week to week for a digital lab or quizzes, um, just make those worth the same amount of points. Um, I really would like to do some discussions, it just depends on how many people come to the Google Classroom meetups every day, um, so we'll see how that goes on. And that might reduce the amount of questions if you uh, participate in those discussion boards. Um, so, but just to be clear, there's only 100 points. So at the end of the nine weeks, uh, you, you got 100 points, you got whatever you got out of 100 points with no extra credit. If you got a question wrong in one, and you know, you got five out of 10, um, because you just gave me bad information, just resubmit it. I will not count you off for the, for uh, being late if you do it that way. Um, because that really shows, I feel like a commitment to, uh, getting your work done correctly, even if you're struggling to do it uh, right the first time. So um, the, the way that I'd prefer that you communicate with me if you have questions is from 8.30 to 4.30 on the Remind app here. So just follow the directions on this. Uh, go to rmd.at forward slash g42dd9. Um, you'll do your name and you'll do your phone number. That way you can text me and I don't know your phone number. I'm not gonna text you any other time uh, other than what you allow me via this app. And uh, if you, you get sick of what I'm saying, I'm pr you can just block me. So uh, it gives you a little bit more control on the, on the communication aspect. A um, little bit more information on projects and assessments. Project one is a Google Slides presentation. You're gonna choose uh, an animal to, pre to present. You get to pick any one of the like 20 so animals that we have available. Include the scientific and a new PIAC name of your animal. Include five interesting facts about your animal and list the taxonomic hierarchy of your animal. Um, I have a Google Slides that you can look through to uh, give you some inspiration. And uh, I also did another video on that. Project video is a short essay comparing surviving uh, in the Arctic uh, from modern times to uh, in the past. So uh, I expect about three to four pages. I gave you 10 writing prompts. If you used every writing prompt and you wrote uh, two sentences, that's, that's your whole paper right there. So um, that shouldn't be too difficult if, if you're a junior in high school. Um, if it is difficult, it's excellent practice, so do it anyway. Um, this link connects to the, uh, the uh, document that explains that in detail. Uh, we'll have the two assessments. So this is different than the weekly assessments. Unit assessment is over the terrestrial animals. So including all of the readings that I had you do, uh, you'll have the opportunity to do the quizzes uh, assignment. Uh, unit assessment two is over surviving the Arctic. So uh, I gave you, I don't know, I think it was eight or so articles to read. I read through every one of them myself already. Um, I didn't choose anything that I thought was terribly boring. It was all full of pretty decent information. Um, so uh, if you read through those, this assessment will be pretty easy for you. Uh, if you are local and you hunt, um, it's probably gonna be even easier for you. So if you don't have any technology in the household, um, the if you don't wanna do the earth science curriculum um, and you wanna stay on track with the rest of your classmates, you'll need to check out that one yellow book we have on the Arctic. Um, there is plenty of information on terrestrial mammals there. You can do all the same information. Um, the taxonomic hierarchy though might be a little bit difficult this way. Uh, just call me and I can help you find the proper terms. Uh, if you can get any access to technology for just a little bit to Google uh, your animal on the itis.gov website, uh, that would help you out here too. But I'm also going to be available all day long for you, so feel free to contact me if you can't find it. Um, the book should have enough information for you to uh, make a presentation, but as you don't have access to technology, I'll need you to do that on um, regular notebook or printer paper with drawings and colors. So again, I don't want just black and white pencil. Please make sure it looks nice uh, 
and uh, has the all the same information that I expected before. Uh, the second project you can complete in the same way. If you don't have access to technology, you can uh, use a book or you can uh, also include your personal experience, uh, interview your uh, elders or family members to help you complete this and just give me, um, I think two handwritten pages would be the equivalent of four double space pages on the, on the computer. So let's go for two handwritten pages there, okay? So over here we have our daily activities. So um, next Monday, when this is released, you will uh, just hopefully, I just wanna make sure everybody has what they need to be successful. I'm gonna con try to contact everybody make sure um, you have access to the website and all the information on the website so our first uh, text that we will delve very, like very deeply in will be the North Slope website that lists all of the terrestrial animals um, what I want us to focus on terrestrial mammals and uh, next week we'll go ahead and start our digital project and just uh, get that done with right out of the way um, by the fr following friday so that's two weeks to work on one powerpoint presentation um, by then you'll have completed two uh, assessments um, let me just go ahead and show you what those are so um, five terrestrial animals found on the north slope you just got to list them and then you're going to pick one to focus on each week and give me three interesting facts about it. Uh, the Inup uh, Nupiak name, uh, the scientific name, uh, go to the itis.gov to tell me the order and suborder. And then uh, looking at this chart, we have uh, Mammalia, Carnivora, Ursidae, which are bears. And you need to tell me, is uh, your animal more closely related to animal A, animal B, uh, animal C, or animal D? Okay, and then you need to explain your answers. So uh, you chose animal A because uh, the order of your animal uh, showed that it was in the carnivora section. So it's more closely related to Ursidae than it is uh, any of the others. So that would be a perfectly valid explanation. If you have another reason, uh, animal A looks more dog-like or bear-like than the others, that could also work for me, okay? So... Let's go back. So each week, that's what I'm expecting, is one of those done, four of those total. Um, the third week, uh, continuing that fourth week, there you go. And the uh, unit assessment here is going to be a quizzes. So um, quizzes you can find here, but I will be giving the assessment in Google Classroom. Um, so terrestrial mammals of the North Slope, we have 20 questions. Okay, all of these are questions I got from the readings that I gave you, so uh, you'll have uh, plenty of opportunities to uh, find that information. Just take your time, get it done correctly, and I don't see any reason why you couldn't get 100% on this. So, um, when we get to, at, this is the last week of April, we're gonna we're gonna have our unit assessment due. Um, go ahead and start thinking about getting the, your uh, digital project two done. That's the the four three to four page essay, um, and the essay is essentially you comparing the text that I provide here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different articles to read. Um, you know, just read one a day. It shouldn't be too too hard for you. I really think you can do that, and I really think they're great. If you only chose one, um, the one from 5-4, the Inupiaq Elder, or um, the Inuit woman who survived the Arctic alone is really good. 5-1 um, or 5-4, but uh, all of them are great. Those ones just are uh, particularly riveting. So... I'll, ha I'll hand out the um, quizzes on the uh, survivalism unit here. Again, 20 questions. Just make sure that is done by the following Monday. On the final week of school, I'll just make sure that we all are getting the grades that we need to get and you're getting any makeup work done. 
So keep in mind any of this can and will be modified as needed to meet individual student needs. If your student like modifications to the schedule, we can set up a phone conference time to see what modifications we can use. Please contact me at my district email, andrew.hogan at nsbsd.org, or uh, call or text me at 312-625-7618. Uh, um, that's my Google Voice number, so... Uh, I, I don't have any problems with anybody contacting me there um, essentially any time of the day, but my official office hours are 8.30 to 4.30. So hopefully this uh, provided some insight on what we're going to be doing for the next six weeks. Thanks for listening, and hopefully I'll see you soon.